So in this video, we're going to be creating our enemies and it's going to be so that we can just spawn them on the fly. We can delete them where, whenever we want, when they're destroyed sort of thing. And uh, they're going to also have artificial intelligence in the fact that they randomly move in certain directions for a set amount of time, basically. Uh, so it's pretty much going to be a copy of the player class, but with those added features. So what we do is we go to File, New, File, and then we create it with a header and we name it Enemy. And I think I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. All right, so we go into our player header and we'll just copy that. But we're going to name it enemy. An enemy is also going to inherit from, <clears throat> excuse me, the entity uh, base class. You can have a movement speed and attack damage. I suppose you can also have a uh, walking counter um, at a direction. I guess that doesn't really matter. Um, we can just co comment out these for now. Name this enemy. And we will take our .cpp file, copy that too. Change it to enemy. And I know I could use a place all, but it's not very many. So we're just going to comment these out for now until we deal with it. But that's weird. I think my computer froze for a second. There we go. All right. Okay, so let's go into our main and we're going to create another vector array and it's going to be basically the exact same thing as our projectile. So we'll just take that, copy it, then paste, but we're going to call this enemy vector array and it's a vector of type enemy. We need to make sure that we're using a different iterator. So we'll call this iterator four. Um, change this to enemy array, enemy object. And we can name it enemy one for the object. And it's important to always include the header. There we go. So now for the same thing, we're also going to be drawing um, the enemies. And we'll make it so that the enemies are always under the player because of the drawing operations, like I explained in a different video. So draw enemies. And we'll use the same counter because that doesn't matter. And this is iter4. And this is enemy array. Window dot draw enemy array counter dot rect. Okay. So we can create an enemy and push it into um, that array we created. So we go enemy 
array dot push back and then we're going to push back enemy one but before we push it back we are going to set its position so we go enemy one dot rect dot set position and how about we set it to 400 by 200 so now we should be seeing a little rectangle being drawn on that is representative of our enemy which is right there so let's try moving it over a bit so there's our enemy we want to make it so that it's um, so that it looks like an enemy instead of just a box so how we're going to do that is we're going to find a sprite sheet of um, some sort of random enemy I didn't plan any of this ahead of time and we're going to make it so that its artificial intelligence uh, moves like an animation from the sprite sheet so let's just go over to um, uh, dog pile and we'll go enemy sprite sheet Beetlejuice sequel what I'm not sure if any of these are very good. Well, this one would be okay. Uh, we could make this little Koopa thing. I think that's what they're called. Uh, walk um, in both directions sideways. It would be very complex. And uh, there wouldn't be up and down movement. I mean, it wouldn't really be that much harder to add the up and down movement, though. But, uh, okay. Let's save this. Um, save it to the desktop. And we're just going to drag it into our resources. Okay, so now, you know what, we could use these little green guys, maybe that would be funner. So they have like a thing that they can fire, want to do that eventually as well. Okay, so we want to actually draw the sprite of the enemy. So we'll draw it after the rect, so window.draw enemy array counter dot sprite but we need to actually create um, the texture and sprite actually just the texture is fine for the enemy so we'll just name it texture enemy enemy sprite sheet dot png and now we want to set the um, texture onto the um, the actual sprite for the enemy so we go enemy one dot sprite dot set texture and then we named it I believe texture enemy yeah so now we've set the sprite, um, but it doesn't have the, it didn't load in the correct sort of um, texture rect for it. So we can copy that from the player and then we can go enemy 
one dot sprite dot set texture rect and let's try and figure out what the correct dimensions are for our specific sprite sheet for one of the sprites. Oh yes, we need to create a um, a update function for our enemy that makes it so that the sprite is always located at the same position as our rect. So let's do that first. So that's what we were doing in the player right there. So void enemy update sprite.set position rec.get position. So we just need to activate that over here. And then we need to go into our main and under draw enemies, we're just going to enable the update method. So now it should actually be loading the sprite at the rex position. And it does, sweet. So we want that little uh, green dude that throws those boomerangs. So we have to count over how many that is. So it should be zero, one, two, three, four. So it starts at four over. So So I actually don't think we needed that right there because we actually initialized it uh, in our enemy.cpp right here. Sometimes it doesn't actually work there properly, but we're just going to go 32 times 4 to try and see if that actually loads it in properly. So it doesn't look like 32 is the right moving over amount. Let's try 40. So it looks like let's try 50. Okay. So that's that's pretty close. Um, what if we made it times five? Would it show up in the same position? Yeah, so that's not bad. So what we're doing is we are using it by 49. So the width, width and the height should be 49, I believe, as well. Yeah. OK. So now we want to make it so that our little enemy moves on his own. So we actually need a, um, a random function. And I actually created one in a different project. So I'll just load that in. Um, It was random. So we'll go into main and above main. We will use this int generate random um, int max, which is our input for the maximum random number that will be allowed to be generated from one to that number. 
and then you can just copy this if you want or I always include the source code in these more complex videos so what we can do is actually I'm going to uh, stop this video right here and continue on in the next one.